Welcome to City South Online. My name is Landon, and before we throw to Tyson for our message, I just have a few quick announcements to go over. First things first, we have day camps. Now, day camps are new this year. Day camps are a way to spread our effort over the whole summer and continue to sow into your kids in more than just July. We have four summer camps running throughout July and August, hitting a variety of topics such as sports, art, baking, and Lego. Now, if you want more information or you want to sign up, please head to CitySouthYEG on Instagram or CitySouthChurch.com. We also have backyard camps, and backyard camps are exactly how we did them last year. Except if you were thinking this year that you did one and you, you had your experience, you had your fun, and you don't want to do the same thing twice, you are mistaken. These are new, these are different, it's new content for your kids, but it's the same heartbeat. We want to connect your community to your kids and show them the love of Jesus through loving them authentically. We still have youth this summer. Don't think we left you high and dry. Matt isn't going to be kicking up with some burgers on the grill. We're still hard at work this summer. July 5th, there's a slip and slide night at the Cofflers with water guns. So if you want to get your kids out of the house, please, from 7 to 9 p.m. July 5th. Last but not least, next week, July 9th, we are back in person. Service is back at City South, and we're going to be able to see each other's beautiful faces again. When my kids were younger, one of the, the books we read was Alexander and his terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. And it's a comical story. The, the boys enjoyed it because there was humor involved and it was kind of silly humor. But uh, Alexander, his day starts where he wakes up in the morning and there's gum stuck in his hair. And it seems like he goes, he, he knew at the beginning, like this is going to be a bad day. And everything that could go wrong went wrong. Have you ever had a day like that where everything that can go wrong does go wrong? Uh, this isn't anything horrific, but uh, I've been getting flat tires all the time lately uh, in both of our vehicles. I don't know what it is. Our garage doesn't have nails laying on the ground, but it feels like every week I have been taking a tire in to get patched to get fixed. And as you know, you never get a flat tire at a convenient time. Whenever you get a flat tire, it's always like, this is the worst possible moment. This is the worst possible. I am having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Thanks for joining us on this, uh, this July long weekend. And uh, we're meeting online for, uh, for this Sunday. And this summer, we've been looking at the book of Acts. We're actually looking at a particular person, Paul, who's really prominent throughout the whole book of Acts, especially the last two thirds of the book. And we're just, as a church, we've been reading through it. You can go to the website and read Bible reading and get a digital or a paper copy of the Bible reading plan that we're working through. But we're just looking at the life of Paul in the book of Acts. And he had a time where he could say, I'm having a terrible, no good, really bad day. I, I, if it happened to me, I'd be like, this is worst day ever. You know, definitely top three worst days ever. And, and we find it in, the, like I said, the book of Acts chapter 16, starting at verse 16. So Acts 16, 16. And Paul's traveling with, uh, with Silas, a f companion of his, a friend of his, that they've been traveling together and, and teaching and speaking and, and sharing Jesus with different people. And uh, he gets to this one uh, town, and there's this girl that's following them around. And so as they're traveling through kind of the main part of town where all the, you got to remember, there's a market. It's not like... Canada today this is the Middle East a couple thousand years ago and so as they're going through this town there would be like a central location where all commerce would happen where you would go to buy food and to trade and and to do everything that kind of required um, purchasing and selling or trading it would happen in one central location and and as they're kind of walking through the central location this girl is following them and she's not being shy. She actually is yelling out, these men are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. So she's declaring who they are and what they're doing. 
But this girl, there was there was something unique about her. You see, she had um, a spirit in her that would help her tell the future. And she had men, two men that owned her. And they would use her ability, her being possessed by the spirit, they would use this ability to make money. She was a fortune teller. And by all accounts, it seems like from the story, they did quite well uh, financially through this girl. So they were using this girl to uh, gain money from. And so as Paul and Silas are walking, I, I, I get the, the, <coughs> the feeling <laughs> they're getting a little frustrated because the text says, finally, it's kind of like they're exasperated. And finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the spirit left her. <clears throat> so this is awesome. This girl is delivered. Whatever the spirit was, it, it, it wasn't who she was. It wasn't supposed to be a part of her. And it's now been removed from her. And so I'm sure there was a sense of relief and just like, ah, oh, finally, it's me. But for the men, this is terrible. Because she can't predict the future anymore with any sense of accuracy. Their cash cow, their way of making easy money has disappeared. And so what do they do? In verse 19, when, when our owners realized that, they, that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar. And so, in some ways, they're telling the truth. It was an uproar for those two men. But throwing the city into an uproar, they're, 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 they're making this way worse than what it was. But they have lost easy money. And by advocating customs unlawful for Romans to accept or practice. And so they're playing the political game. And so everybody gets riled up and they are against Paul and Silas. And so can you imagine being in a crowd where everyone instantly turns against you? Somebody has, has taken who you are and twisted it in a way to make you look the worst possible that you can look. And now everyone's out to get you. And they are saying all sorts of vile things. I'm sure they're maybe even throwing things. But man, they are just going after them. And verse 22 says this, And the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas. And the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. This is not pleasant. Being stripped and beaten. I once traveled and I was in a country in Southeast Asia and they talked about how uh, one form of punishment uh, was being beaten with a rod. And they talked about if, if, if on your bare skin, if you got beaten enough, what happens is, is the skin and the muscle actually sags and it doesn't, um, it doesn't recoup, it doesn't um, firm up again. And so you have this sagging uh, skin and muscles all along your back and your buttocks and it would just all droop and sag because you're getting beaten with a rod. This isn't like when I was a kid and I was in trouble and uh, you know a wooden spoon a few times on the bum you know some sort of punishment and then you move on. This is severe punishment, severe pain with potential for lifelong consequences to your physical appearance and maybe even your physical well-being and after they had been severely flogged they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully and so they're put into the inner cell ie no windows no light it'd be dark it'd be terrible and fasten their feet in stocks so they can't move have you ever had a terrible, bad, no good day? Paul and Silas are having a terrible day. See, when bad things happen, they, they happen to us often. You know, I get a flat tire. That's happening to me. Someone says something mean or lies about me or attacks my character. That's happening to me. And so often the bad things are happening to us. Paul's gets beaten, he gets thrown in prison, that's happening to him. 
So, so how does he respond, Paul and Silas? Well, it says in verse 20, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. The response is terrible, horrible, no good day. It's prayer and worship. Unjust, terrible things happening to them. Their response was to pray and worship to God. You see, often when bad things happen to me, I think I get consumed with what's happening to me. Paul and Silas, what did they get consumed with? What God wanted to do through them. How could God take these situations and do something amazing through them? So instead of fixating what was happening to them, they wanted to focus on what God could do through them. It's a mindset, sh mindset shift when you're, uh, when you're having a no good, terrible, bad day. And what, what did God do through them? Something miraculous happened. There was an earthquake. Doors open in the prison. Chains fall off. Prison guard sees this. The consequence of a prisoner allowing a, a, a for a guard allowing a prisoner to escape is you'd be killed. Made it made the success rate really high. You did not let anybody loose because you'd be killed. It helped uh, with guards not being bribed, letting prisoners go. They knew they'd be the death penalty. And so when this when this uh, guard sees that the doors all open, he pulls out his sword and he's gonna he's gonna commit suicide. He's gonna land on a sword and kill himself because he's like. I might as well kill myself instead of maybe being killed slowly by the authorities. And Paul and Silas stop him and like, no, 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 none of us have left. None of us have left. In the course of the rest of the story, they get to tell this soldier about Jesus and his whole family surrenders their life to Jesus. Paul and Silas were having a terrible, no good, bad day. But what God did through that was having a whole family transformed by Jesus, this prison guard. The next time you're having a terrible, no good, bad day, the question is not to ask, why is this happening to me, God? The question to ask is, what are you going to do through me, God, in this situation? God wants to do things through you and work with you and link arms with you to accomplish all that he wants to do. And so maybe your terrible situation is through you, you get to encourage someone. Through you, you get to uh, share Jesus with someone. Maybe through this situation, you're being transformed, you're growing. I know it's not always the most comforting thing to hear because it doesn't take away the bad situation. It doesn't take away the pain always. But we see the story throughout Scripture over and over and over again is when those terrible days happen, when those tough situations happen, God does things through those people, through those situations to advance what He wants to do. So I just want to encourage you, instead of, God, why is this happening? Can you pause and say, God, what are you doing through me? What are you going to do through this situation? And maybe like Paul and Silas, that's a, a moment when the bad times happen. You pray and worship to center yourself, to remind yourself of, God, what do you want to do through me? Thank you so much for joining us online. I Pray that uh, God will use you and you will see incredible things happening and we'll see you in person next Sunday.